I get the feeling now that, is, that we as a whole, as a nation, and frankly the Western world, and we look back on it, that there's a, a bit of shame, and there should be, in how frightened we became as a population and how many of us conducted ourselves. Now, not enough people are ashamed, and the worst people aren't ashamed at all, but many people look back and they think, man, that's, that, that sucked. I wished I hadn't done that. I wished I hadn't ostracized my brother. I wish I hadn't put a mask on my 10-year-old. I wish I had But we Mm -hmm. were ripe for a big scare then. We were. We were a soft population ripe for a big scare. That hasn't changed. We're ripe for another one, aren't we? Yeah, that's always the case. That's always the case. I mean, human, the course of the human condition, it it, it alters, but it, there, there are certain consistencies and patterns. And one of those things is that there are always things both legitimate and illegitimate and manufactured that are that that you know people are going to be scared of right there are things that are completely reasonable to be scared of and in fact if you were not scared of them you probably wouldn't live very long but then there's also forces that are out there in the media or within politicians or within certain activist groups and whatever who are trying to manufacture or even exaggerate certain forms of fear and outrage because the easier you are to scare and i would say the easier you are to offend and the easier you are to outrage the easier you are to control and if you want to become a sovereign individual and you want to become a powerful and individual with discipline and self-control, you have to be able to resist some of that. Because once you're moving from a position of fear, then you're, you're no longer thinking clearly. Okay, so how do I begin that, Zuby? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm one of these types, and it, look, yep. we, we forget that there are a lot of men out there. Well, I'll, I'll speak to men specifically. There are a lot of 30, 40-year-old men out there. They didn't have a dad. Or if they did, they had mm-hmm. a crappy one or one of these limp-wristed losers who never taught them about resilience or pushing through or, or any skills or self-confidence. So they don't know. They want it. They, like, they, want, yeah. they want to look like Zuby. They want to begin <laughs> this, but they don't, know, they don't know where to begin. How does that guy yeah. begin? He's not 10. He's 40. Yes. Get yourself in the weight room. And I'm not even being facetious at all right start with your own body start with your own body your own mind your own spirit your own heart and work on self-improvement take radical accountability right no one can work out for you no one can uh force you to eat anything you're you're totally in control of that and i think that if you can get your body in check your mind your body and your spirit these things are all connected mental health physical health, spiritual health, these things are all connected. They're not siloed off. It's important to get yourself in much better shape and that does not have a positive impact on your mental state. So I think that's I think that's a fantastic place to, to begin. I think people look at it as only something about aesthetics or, or health or vanity or, or something like that. And it, it's, it's, it goes so far beyond that, it has massive cognitive benefits. So I'd say that's a great place to start. And then also work on self-improvement in any other areas, whatever areas it is that you feel that you are deficient in as a man. That could be your finances. It could be your relationships. It could be how you conduct yourself. It could be how you how you look and how, how you dress. Um, take take steps to improve that. And it's OK. It's, it's correct for these things to be very incremental. No one is expecting, uh, you know, overnight overnight changes but if if you genuinely want to improve yourself or there's something that you want to learn or there's something that you want to get better at then you can do it and it's a matter of just putting in that effort day in day out it's what i do in my own life it's what i encourage other people to do i recognize that i'm not perfect i've still got a long way to go hopefully i've got many many decades more to live and many more things that i I hope to achieve and accomplish and it's just taking it a day at a time and and doing your best and, and genuinely putting in the effort Support the First TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis, The History of FBI Scandals, and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.